Well, we are talking short-term rentals and serviced accommodation now because we're delighted to welcome a new sponsor to the Short-Term Rentals Tribe, and it is under the doormat and sister company, Hosperia. And I am delighted to be joined by somebody who I consider to be short-term rentals royalty, and that is company founder and CEO, Merrily Carr. Merrily, it's lovely to catch up with you again because we first met um, a few years back at an industry event and I was so impressed um, with your knowledge of, of this sector and you've been in it, um, well, you know, right back when you started under the doormat in 2014. So could you tell us a little bit about your two companies and how they've grown over the years and what they offer? Um, <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, look, it's, it's a pleasure to be working with you. Um, you know, for me, short term rentals is something that I've been passionate about since I set up under the doormat back in 2014. Um, and for me, it's always been about professionalizing the way short term rentals are done. Um, and obviously, we've done that with under the doormat since 2014. And most recently, we launched our partnership with Cadogan Estates and our three Sloan Gardens Boutique Apart Hotel in, in Sloan Square. Um, and as we learned how short-term rentals worked and as we built our own technology ecosystem, what we also understood is that there are so many independent operators, you know, small and larger scale entrepreneurs who are out there who want to participate in the sector. Um, and in many cases don't have the technology and, and in some cases even the expertise to, to make the most of that opportunity. And that's why uh, last year we launched Hosperia which is our tech arm, so that any smaller or medium-sized operator can access short-term rentals by literally listing their properties and all the distribution across an exclusive mix of, of, of distribution channels, including the likes of Marriott Homes and Villas, Expedia, and lots that actually smaller operators can't directly get access to themselves. But it also provides all of the operational technology that you need, the field management systems, pricing, um, everything to, to basically get you started. Or if you're an operator who's been struggling with like tech overload and lots of different systems and not knowing how to bring it all together, this is just a really simple way to access short term rentals so that that people who are managing properties, um, hosting can actually do what they're good at, which be which is have great relationships with the owners and deliver a wonderful experience for the guests. Well, I have to say, Merrily, uh, Hosperia is a very, very impressive bit of software. And as you said, it's an aggregator and a dashboard for managing all aspects of, of your short term rental business. Um, and that's, you know, any people can use that from anywhere in the UK, anywhere in the world. Um, under the doormat, if we could just quickly focus on, on that side of things as well. You're based in London um, and you offer a fully managed uh, short term rental service so that you can you can really take care of everything for the owner, can't you? Absolutely. And I think, you know, again, coming back to that ethos of professionalism, what we want to do is for an owner who wants to, to enter the short term rentals market and be completely hands off. Um, we blueprint the home so we understand how everything works. We have everything well documented. We ensure the property. We distribute it, we manage it, we manage all the aspects of the guest um, and we enable that owner to earn that income in a completely hassle free and effortless way. So, you know, that's always been the ethos of under the doormat. And in addition to doing that for individual owners, we're now doing that for larger and larger property companies. So portfolio owners in the built to rent sector um, and for the likes of the great estates. Um, and it's great to see that actually the broader property world is really opening up their mind to the fact that this isn't just a cowboy industry of, you know, kind of posting things up and problems and parties, but actually a really professional sector um, that is emerging and helping uh, property owners over a mix of, of, of all the different types of long lets, short lets, et cetera, to optimize the yield on, on the portfolio and the assets that they own. Mm. Well, I have to say, Merrily, that um, I regard you as an absolute leading light uh, in the sector in terms of 
all your efforts to professionalize it um, and that leads us nicely to talk uh, about what's happened uh, to the sector during the COVID-19 lockdowns because obviously um, you know it's been pretty much shut down for a, about a year um, and that's had a huge impact on on uh, you know short-term rental owners um, how have you kind of fared during this period um, and helped you know keep everybody going yeah, I mean, look, it, it's been a really tough year for everyone. Um, I mean, I feel really fortunate because in many ways, um, we we were able to work with our owners to, to have more sort of mid and long lets um, over the period. But actually more importantly is that for the first time ever, the sector came together um, and more than 30 operators from around the country, you know, including some of the biggest operators like Sykes and One Fine Stay, um, we all came together to do NHS homes. So in the very first lockdown, actually all of us were offering accommodation for free to NHS workers. Um, and in total, Under the Doormat delivered just over a million pounds worth of free stays. And all the companies combined delivered over the 20 million pounds worth of free stays, um, which is an impressive thing in its own right, especially because it was just genuinely uh, a charitable exercise. Uh, by some of the best companies in the sector. But with every good deed actually comes opportunities that we'd never anticipated. Um, and so in working with government and them hearing what was going on for the first time, they started to get their head around the fact that this isn't just a peer-to-peer -peer sector, that there are professional operators. Um, and actually that, that if our sector could come together under one umbrella, that government would be willing to purchase stays in short-term rentals. Um, which is something that's never happened before. Um, and so what we did was we built what's called Trusted Stays. So it's an industry platform backed by the Short-Term Accommodation Association where any professional operator who is accredited by quality in, of quality in tourism or an equivalent is able to uh, list their properties and access government and corporate bookings, an area which uh, our sector has always struggled to do in, in any consistent way. Um, and because we've now won the first ever government RFP back in February, um, it is also opening up the doors to the global distribution system that, that has been a walled garden for hotels in the past. Um, and so again, I think it's an opportunity coming out in the recovery for our sector to have much more counter cyclical bookings, um, you know, when the leisure market is a bit slower. Um, and in certain ge geographies, actually, um, you know, this could even be a more important segment of the market in the longer term. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's amazing when you think, okay, a year ago, none of this existed. And actually coming out of COVID, we've now got something completely new that's helping the sector break into new areas that we were never able to break into before. And I don't think that we would be there actually if it weren't for COVID. Um, so I think that's really, really exciting. It, it really is. It's so, um, you know, such a positive thing to come out of such you know challenging and, and difficult circumstances and I guess that leads nicely on to the fact that restrictions are lifting now um, you know the industry starting to open up again we can start welcoming guests back into our properties um, how, how do you see uh, the next couple of years for the short-term sector merrily because clearly one of the things that, that may impact it is the lack of overseas guests but I think that could be compensated by you know a huge uh, uh, uprising in in guests within the UK yeah so it's really interesting we um, as an industry did some work with STR which is a, a benchmarking company for the traditional hospitality sector um, and what was fascinating was that back in October when uh, when the restrictions eased last year what we actually saw was that short-term rentals were recovering quicker than other segments of accommodation so I think there's an appetite for consumers to stay in independent and self-contained accommodation, which of course short-term rentals offers. Um, so that comfort of uh, a home um, and the space that an individual home provides is something that I think is, is, is very timely in a COVID world. Um, so I think that's a big opportunity. And if we look over at you know, North America, where there are already for, for a longer period, fewer restrictions, we actually see a boom in 
the short-term rental and holiday homes market. Um, and I would expect to see that replicated, not just here in the UK, but, but internationally. Now you talked about the difference between staycations and international travelers. I think what we will see is, is more staycations, certainly in 2021, but I think also once people have experienced it and understand the ease, I think we'll see that as a trend that continues. Um, so I think that's positive. Um, but I also think with the government introducing the traffic light system and all these kinds of things, we will also see international travel returning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think one of the things that we do need to be mindful of is I think it will take a little while for the ADRs or the kind of daily rates, certainly in city locations to return to what we might have seen pre COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think overall, one of the things that for me is very important is recognizing the balance between um, what our sector does, which is really help to fill void periods, uh, properties that would be second homes um, and, uh, and holiday homes when the owner's not using it um, versus landlords that are looking to do a kind of permanent short-term rental business. Um, and I think what the crisis has taught us is that that is a risky thing to do because um, you know, where an AST will deliver you a guaranteed rent through the year, um, short term rentals don't do that, you know, and, and I think that's something for for landlords in particular to consider is, you know, what is that mix, how can they use these two things to, to kind of work in, in collaboration. Um, but I very much don't see a return to individual landlords and cities kind of you know, doing short term rentals uh, necessarily in the same permanent basis that you might have seen pre COVID. Mm. Oh, well, that's very interesting to hear your view on that. And um, I mean, the, the, the sector, you know, it has developed rapidly over over the last few years, um, you and I met at the first ever short term accommodation show, which was the whole industry coming together for the first time. And there was such a buzz there. Um, and so many different companies uh, providing services and innovation, which is obviously all coming into the uh, Hosperia ecosystem. Um, I, I think, you know, the, the, these the, the accommodation it has to be of a very high standard. I think that's what the market expects. So um, I was interviewing another uh, a lady about holiday lets earlier, and um, she said that it's uh, it's like being a boutique ho hotel owner. You have to think um, in that kind of mindset. Do you agree? Absolutely. I mean, I think it is very much hospitality. Um, you know, people are not just looking for a cheap place to stay they're actually looking for a high quality hospitality experience. And what they like about it is the authenticity that we can provide in our sector. You know, these are real homes. Um, these are high quality properties, but often people are looking for something a bit nicer than where they live every day. You know, when they go on holiday, they're expecting something really high standard. Um, and I think the operators and um, the providers who are able to, to deliver on those standards are the ones that are going to succeed. Mm -hmm. um, and you see that also even in the hotel industry, you know, it's like the budget hotels, all those types of things are ones that are often struggling. Um, and, you know, I think our sector is pushing that part of the industry to evolve and innovate and, and to offer a better product. Um, and I think, you know, consumers at all budget points are still looking for good quality. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that, that doesn't mean it has to be expensive. They're also happy with glamping or, you know, small spaces and, and various different innovations. But I think across the board, quality is something that needs to be there to be successful in, in the sector. Totally, 100% agree. And also, I think another thing is, is cleanliness. And that's obviously a quite a big issue following COVID. And you mentioned that one of the attractions of, uh, of this type of accommodation is it's almost like a self-contained, um, you know, isolation pod. You, you don't even have to be greeted if you don't want to. Many of these places have digital keys to access or lock boxes. So, um, you know, it does give people that comfort, but also, um, you on under the doormat i noticed that you'd had um kind of cleaning protocols upgraded so you're setting standards for cleanliness within this type of accommodation aren't you absolutely i mean to be honest that's something that we've always uh had a focus on um and i think covid's just brought it more into the consumer's mind mm -hmm. um so we we're able to highlight some of the things that we've always been doing and and you know that's that's provided a lot of reassurance to potential guests who are looking to book and, and come and stay with us 
Um, and I think for us, it's also been important because we've really fed into the industry guidelines. So we work together um, with, you know, the Short Term Accommodation Association, other associations across the UK and internationally to make sure that anyone who's operating in the sector is aware of what the right cleaning standards are. And those have all been signed off by government um, and are part of accreditation with quality and tourism. Um, also fit, feed into the Visit Britain Good to Go scheme um, so that you can go and check out what it is that you need to do and make sure that you're certifying that, that those things are being done. Because mm. I think one of the, the biggest challenges for a, a, a holiday let or STA owner is, is maintaining cleanliness and keeping cleaners on board. If your cleaner leaves, you know, it can cause a big problem. But I think one of the big things about um, using the services of under the doormat or uh, the services within the Hosperia kind of ecosystem is that you will get consistency of standards. So you've you've set standards within your, your businesses and your cleaners and your suppliers will be adhering to the standards that you've set. Absolutely. And I think that's really important. And, you know, whether it's owners who work with us and we take care of everything and under the doormat, or whether it's Hosperia partners where we're able to provide all the guidance that they need to make sure they're meeting those standards uh, when they operate in the sector. You know, we really want to just help everyone to raise that bar, because what we also know from our own experience is that when the bar is raised high, actually, it is a much more pleasant business to run mm. um, because you get the right customers and the customers are happy um, and you don't feel like you're just running around from pillar to post um, dealing with issues. Um, and so I think that whole philosophy of being proactive, doing things right from the outset really helps this to be a fantastically fun industry to be a part of. Mm. Mm, well, I think that's a good a good top tip. And I was just wondering if you had a, a couple of others for us of somebody that was thinking of starting a short term accommodation business. What, what would you say give them, you know, to guide them? Um, I mean, look, I think first thing is think about how you want to structure it and get the right technology to support yourself. Um, because a lot of people think, oh, I'll just post a bunch of properties on Airbnb. And before they know it. Actually, what they find is, you know, they're tied only to one platform. Um, they find then if they want to go multi-platform, it gets completely complex of how do you manage all the bookings and reservations. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you've got several properties and all these reservations coming in, you need a schedule to manage it all. You need everything going into one system. You need that your owners can see into it. So they're not calling you every five minutes asking you questions. Um, and so I think ultimately solutions like Hosperia just help people entering this market to kind of plug in and focus on the owners they're bringing in, delivering that hospitality, but knowing that they can do it in a simple way. Um, because I think what most people think when they come into this business is they think, oh, it's going to be really easy. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if you talk to anyone who's been in this sector for a little while, they'll say, it is far more complex than what you think. And you only realize that once you get part way in. And I think many people find themselves being like a duck floating over water, paddling so hard underneath. Um, and, you know, what, what I want to help people do is to make that easier um, so, that, um, so that they can be really successful and have profitable businesses in short term rentals, because I really believe that the best thing about our sector is the entrepreneurs that are in it, the small businesses, family run operations. Um, and what I don't want to happen is that they all find it too hard that they just sell up and, and leave the industry. I really want us to keep that, that the heart of the industry because that's what makes our industry different from hotels and all these other sectors that become anonymous. Um, and so I hope that things like Hosperia will help make that easier so that um, that people can come in and have thriving, successful businesses. Um, and in particular, given the years ahead where I can see the sector growing again um, and thriving, I think there's no better time to think about having a short term or holiday rental business than than in the years ahead. Mm. No, I totally agree. I think we're just entering a, a golden uh, era of, of short term lettings. And we know we heard from uh, the, the papers today that um, Barclays Bank say that we're going to go into uh, the most uh, 
busy and most thriving economic period since the end of the Second World War. And there's a huge amount of pent up money uh, that's going to come out and, and be spent. And people are going to be looking to enjoy themselves because they've been isolated for the past year. So I do agree with you, Merrily. I think there's a lot of opportunities going ahead. And I think the services that you offer are particularly good for, for people that are going to want to scale up their business. If you've just got one property and you live next door to it, you can probably manage it on your own. But if you're working remotely or you want to scale up, then you definitely need this infrastructure to make it viable. Um, I guess as we close this out, we've got some, some breaking news, haven't we, about an event that's going to be happening in the autumn. Yeah, it's really exciting. Um, the Short Term Accommodation Association together with the European Holiday Homes Association and the Vacation Rental Management Association in North America have all come together to host uh, a European conference. It will be in London on the 14th of September at Tobacco Dock. Um, and the details uh, will be available on, on the website. So you can go to the Short Term Accommodation Association website um, and, and look for the Short Stay Summit, uh, which will be on the 14th of September. Short Stay Summit, 14th of September, and we hope to be joining you there because we're very interested in this part of the sector. We know a lot of landlords are looking at it. Um, and as you say, I think there's huge opportunities in the year ahead. And we should actually just give a brief mention to the Short Term Accommodation Association because they're kind of the industry um, body to bring everybody together, aren't they? And anybody that's in this sector should consider joining. Absolutely. And look, you can join as an individual host, as a small property manager or a larger company. Um, and we've got everyone in the association from the likes of Airbnb and, and Verbo um, to some of the major property companies like Sykes, One Pine Stay and Under the Doormat, as well as a lot of suppliers. So it's also a great way to learn about all the things that can help a, a short term rental business to grow. Um, and we welcome members of all sizes and shapes. And it's a great way to know about what's going on in the industry. Um, and be a part of, uh, of the association to, to help the industry grow in the future. Yes, it's very similar to, you know, standard buy to let. It's going to be the informed and educated and uh, digital minded uh, landlord or property owner that's going to really be the, the success story going forward. I'm sure you'll agree. Absolutely. Fantastic. Well, Merrily, it's been so lovely to talk to you and to welcome you to Property Tribes as, as a, a, a sponsor. Um, I'd love to talk some more and we will do because part of our collaboration or cooperation is we're going to be working together to create content around this topic and hopefully come to some of your events and, and so forth. So we'll be seeing you again very soon. But for now, thank you very much for your support of Property Tribes, helping maintain it as a free to use community resource, which is what all of us sponsors do um, and we're absolutely delighted to have you on board and very much looking forward to working with Under the Doormat and Hosperia. Thank you so much. Wonderful to speak to you and, and looking forward to working with you. Likewise. Bye for now. Bye for now.